This is Tony Farmer. In 2012, the six foot six inch teen was an elite high school basketball prospect that was on the path to playing Division I college basketball. He had several scholarship offers from several Big Ten schools and other programs across the country. He was a talented offensive player that had all the tools make millions playing in the NBA someday. Unfortunately, he ruined his NBA chances when he lost control and brutally assaulted his ex-girlfriend in the lobby of her apartment building in April 2012. The incident, which was caught on camera, showed 17-year-old Farmer pushing, slapping, and kicking his ex-girlfriend as she tried to get away. He was charged with kidnapping and assault for the brutal attack and eventually plead guilty. At his sentencing, the woman he smacked around spoke on his behalf and asked for leniency. I don't know what was wrong with him that day. Um, he, I know he was a good person. I hope he still is. I hope he learns from this. He really needs help. I don't think Jill will give him that. With his victim speaking on his behalf and the fact that he was 17 at the time of the crime, Farmer seemed to be under the impression that he would get probation or minimal jail time. He was wrong. The judge gave him three years in prison and he was completely shocked. That the defendant shall serve a term of three years, years which is the minimum, on count one of that. As to count two in that case, felonious assault, a felony of the second degree, it is ordered that the defendant shall serve a term of two years in prison on that count. As to count three of that case, the robbery, which is also a felony of the second degree, the court uh, orders that the defendant shall serve a term of two years on that oh, count as well. I haven't finished yet. I haven't finished. I haven't finished. Tony. Conviction. This is mandatory and it's for a period of five years. On the felony two convictions, that is felonious assault and robbery, this is a mandatory term and it's for a period of three years. And on the intimidation. After prison, Farmer went to a junior college in Texas for two years, where he was a star basketball player. When he finished up those two years, he entered the NBA draft in 2017 but he was not selected. Even though he ruined his NBA dream, he has been able to turn his life around to make a living playing basketball internationally. This is William Tunches. In 2018, the 21-year-old was lured to a Suwannee, Georgia path by Franecha Torres, a female he had a sexual interest in. He was allegedly going to pay the 17-year-old $300 for a sexual encounter, but things didn't go as planned. Instead of meeting for nature, he was met by her two accomplices, 17-year-old Nicholas Evans and 18-year-old Khalil Miller. Evans pointed a gun at Tunches while Miller hit him with a stick. They wanted him to give up the money he brought, but Tunches fought back and was shot and killed after a struggle over the gun. The three teens took his belongings before fleeing the scene. He was found the next day by kids that lived in the neighborhood. It didn't take long for police to catch the teens as they were involved in other incidents in that same area the day Tunches was killed. When they were questioned, Miller and Evans confessed, while Torres refused to give a statement. When Torres appeared in court to learn her charges, she was shocked to learn she was being charged with felony murder along with armed robbery. You have three warrants for armed robbery and one warrant for felony murder. An apparently shocked Franchi Torres threw glares at her two co-defendants, Nicholas Evans and Khalil Miller, before the magnitude of her situation seemed to settle in. Those are the charges that are pending right now. She may have been under the impression that only the gunman could be charged with murder. Miller and Evans were charged with felony murder, armed robbery, and aggravated assault. Five years have passed since this crime was committed, but it doesn't seem there has been a resolution as all three parties remain in the Gwinnett County Jail. In 2015, 14-month-old Joshua Hill died in a trailer fire. 
His 17-year-old brother, Jacob Morgan, who has autism, was babysitting at the time. When he was interviewed, he gave multiple conflicting statements about what happened before admitting he started the fire. The investigation showed that the fire had two points of origin. Investigators believed that they were set near heaters to make them look accidental. Police also stated that Morgan was obsessed with fire and had a cell phone at the time of the incident and didn't call for help. In court, he was charged with murder, homicide by child abuse and third-degree arson. To set a fire in the bedroom when the child is in the crib sleeping. A burn pattern that goes fire that just lit in another room with a small baby. Walk into the front room, light that fire, and then leave the residence standing outside watching it burn until it becomes too much to go back to. I would ask the court to find probable cause of both charges in this case. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. The testimony, existing on both sides, question testimony. I believe the state has, in fact, met their burden. So therefore, I am going to find that there is probable cause to charge the individual with the found over four general sessions for more charges. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Despite the police evidence, his family stood by him and didn't want him to be prosecuted. We have always believed in his innocence because we know our son. We know that the evidence against him was horrible. But I know in my heart that my son, my oldest son, is innocent of what they said that he did to his guys, to my youngest son. He loves his brother. All he ever wanted was a brother. And he got to enjoy his brother for 14 months, which was not long enough for any of us against the tragedy. The family claimed neighbors prevented him from going back into the trailer. They also claimed he has developmental issues and falsely confessed after five hours of intense interrogation, which was not recorded. To appease the family, prosecutors offered Morgan an opportunity to plead guilty to lesser charges, and he accepted. He pled guilty to involuntary manslaughter, unlawful conduct towards a child, and third-degree arson. He made this statement at his sentencing in 2016. I love my brother. I still do to this very day my best friend, to kill him and be killing a piece of myself. He was the only brother I ever had. And I just wish I could have gotten to him in time. Morgan was then sentenced to 15 years in prison. He was released from prison in December 2022 and will be on probation until December 2027.